The last two tutorials covered how to convert bitmap images into vector graphics using the Power Trace tool within Corel. However, sometimes that's not the best tool to make a vector graphic. Let's take a look at these images I have on my page. These are images that I would build in Corel using the various drawing tools I have access to. Let's take a look at this top image. It's a camera icon. I could send this through Power Trace within Corel, but it's going to distort my image a little bit. Plus, this is simple enough that I could I would prefer to build it right inside of Corel. I can build this entire graphic using my shape tools within Corel. I'm going to start by making a square using my rectangle tool. I'm going to hold down my control button, which will make it a perfect circle. I'm going to change my outline color to red by right clicking on the red color swatch in my palette. That way it's really easy for me to see the lines. Then I'm going to use my shape tool to drag my corners and make them rounded. Next I'll use my rectangle tool to make a rectangle up here. I'm going to copy and paste this rectangle for the other two next to it so they're the exact same size. Then I'm going to select them all and hit B as in bottom, which will align them all to the bottom perfectly. Now that I have all three selected, I'm going to go ahead and hold down my shift button and then click on the big square and then hit trim, which will trim the rectangles from my big square. And now I can simply delete these. Let's make the square in the upper right. holding down my shift again to make it a perfect square. And we'll use the shape tool to bring in the corners. Then I'm going to use my rectangle tool to make this line right here. Then I'll use my ellipse tool while holding down the shift button to make a perfect circle. To make sure it's perfectly centered, I hold down my shift button and click on my large square and then hit C as in center on my keyboard, which will center it perfectly. Then I can go ahead and copy and paste this circle and then hold my shift button to size it down. Control V as in Victor to paste and then size it down. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my horizontal rectangle and my largest circle and I'm going to go ahead and weld them together, making them one shape. Then I'm going to hold down my shift button to get my large square and hit trim, which will cut it out. Now I can delete this out. Now let me move my bitmap over to the side. And now you can see that my vector is finished, so let's go ahead and color it. Just going to grab my blue shapes and make them blue, and these both white. If these two white shapes, I needed them cut through, then I would just go ahead and trim them out from whatever shapes they are on top of. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these and remove the red outline by clicking, right clicking on the X in my color palette. There we go. The camera is pretty simple to make using the tools right inside of Corel. Let's look at this next design. I would use my ellipse tool to build these two shapes up here. 
holding down my control button so they're perfect circles. But I'm going to use a more specialized drawing tool to make these shapes here. My Bezier tool, which is underneath my freehand tool, allows me to place nodes wherever I want. So I'm going to make this red arm shape. I'm just going to click here, here, here. And to close my shape, I hover over my first node. So I get this little arrow and then click again. Then I will switch over to my shape tool to edit the lines. If I click on this line, you can see that it's selected because of this little star. And I'm gonna select convert to curve on my property bar, which will make this a curve. Then I can simply drag this curve up to match my image. Let's do the same with the other lines. Click on the line, convert to curves, drag it up. I'm going to copy and paste this shape to make the one beneath it. Click on it again to rotate it. Then let's go ahead and size it down a bit. For the main shape, I'm going to make a shape that covers both the red and the silver to start. Let me use my Bezier tool to place the nodes. Then, while on my shape tool, I'm going to drag a box around all four of my nodes to select them all and then click Convert to Curves, which will make them all curves at once. I'm going to click on this node here and go ahead and make it a smooth node, which will make this a perfect 180 degrees across, uh, which is what we want. We want that to be perfectly smooth, and I'm going to do the same to this node too. Then I'm going to adjust the angles at the top and the bottom to match my crescent shape. I'm going to make this my gray shape. Now I'm going to copy and paste this shape so that I have two on top of each other and I'm going to make the top one my red crescent. I'm not going to change the left curve at all so that my vectors line up perfectly. First I'm going to use my shape tool to double click where I want to add a node and to delete where I don't need my node anymore. Then I go ahead and take this top node, which is smooth right now, and I convert it into a cusp, which makes the angles independent of each other. So I could drag this angle around to make a point. I'm going to move this node in, and now I just tweak these to line them up to match the arc of my red shape. Let's color these. I'm just going to use flat colors to make it simple. Just grab a gray that's somewhat close. And my favorite red is right here. I need to move this red on top of this one, so just go ahead and move that up. I used my shortcut, but I could go to object and order and adjust the order there. As far as text, 99.9% .9 of the time I'll create my text within Corel, especially something as simple as this. When I'm trying to match a font in Corel, I will type out my word or words using my text tool.
then select my pick tool and I can bring down all of my fonts. I literally just start scrolling through here to find a find a match, one that is close. If I find one that I like that is close, I will click on it. That will move this font, which is not close to this one, <laughs> but as an example, into my top list right up here. Once I get through the entire font list, I can preview my top five picks and then choose the best one for me. This one is simple enough that I can see that my rounded Arial font will be close enough. I'm gonna size it up as big as I can without distorting it. I do not ever wanna stretch my font out like this because it distorts it. If I need to stretch this out a bit, I will switch to my shape tool, which will allow me to stretch the space between each letter. This font is almost a perfect match. You can see that the O is a little different. It's not as perfectly round as the original. If you don't clue your client into the difference, they will most likely never even notice. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add an outline by right clicking on my color swatch, which adds a hair line outline in that red color. And then I double click on my color swatch down in my lower right hand corner, bringing up my outline pen options. I'm gonna go ahead and make my width larger. Let's make my corners and line caps rounded, just like they're rounded in my design. And then I'm gonna select behind fill and scale with image. There we go. Let me go ahead and remove the outlines off of these as well. Both my camera and my Love Me graphics were pretty simple. Let's take a look at this last image. It's an oil rig. This image will be a combination of using the pre-made shapes in Corel, like uh, a lot of rectangles in here, and the Bezier tool to draw like the waves. In the next tutorial, we will take the time and vectorize this within Corel.